This is the Azito Cordless 2-in-1 Nail and Staple Gun. It is not high-end, it's as entry-level a battery-operated nail gun as you can get. Is it worth buying? Well, for me, the answer is yes. I paid $119 for this tool from Bunnies, and that's for the skin-only version, so no battery included. The next comparable tool that I can find is the entry-level Ryobi, also skin-only, which is $269. I'm going to assume that the Ryobi version is a vast improvement on the Azito, seeing as it's a better brand and twice the cost, but I don't own any Ryobi batteries. I already have three or four Azito ones, so for me, it makes sense to look at the Azito tool first. Full disclosure, I like Azito. They're certainly not tradey level, they're for weekend warriors, but they get the job done. I've bought a number of Azito tools over the years and I've been happy with all of them. Again, just to be really clear, Azito are not in the same league as a Pazload or a Makita or a DeWalt or even a Ryobi. I understand that. But I'm not a professional. I do a little bit of work around the house and then out in the workshop and I need to justify my purchases. So I'm reviewing this tool from that perspective. As a hobbyist woodworker, all I'm looking for is a cordless nailer that I can use out here in the workshop to help me bang together plywood boxes much more easily. I might also use it for very light work around the house. So when I saw it at Bunnings, I thought I'd give it a shot. So first off, it feels good in your hand. It weighs about two kilos. It's made of hard plastic, hard rubber and metal. Nothing about it feels flimsy. It feels very strong and secure. Even things like sliding out the magazine, it just feels nice. <laughs> I wouldn't want to drop it on the ground and see what happens to it. But then again, I wouldn't want to drop any of my tools, so. Nails are loaded by sliding back the magazine and dropping them in place. It takes C1 bread nails, 15 to 32 mil in length. It also accepts narrow crown staples, 16 to 22 mil. I have little need for that, but it's nice to know. It's not rocket science. Battery in the back, nailer in the front, press it against your timber and squeeze the trigger. You can hear it wind up as I hold the trigger, so it's not a super fast nailing action. It's a second or two before it fires. If you need to drop a bunch of nails in really quickly, this is probably not the gun for you. One of the reasons I wanted a cordless nailer was for jobs like this. Big boxes made of plywood. I work by myself and I find that big boxes are a real pain to clamp up on my own. So I wanted a tool that I could quickly pick up with one hand and use it to bang in a couple of nails. Once I've got a couple of nails in there keeping everything nice and straight, then I can come back use the clamps and the whole job will be a lot easier for me. Up until now, I've been using my air nailer for this sort of task. The problem with that is that it comes with this really annoying cord which just gets in the way all over the place. There's another reason why I try not to use the air tools too much. What was that again? <laughs> Now, of course, there's no air or gas compression on this gun. You do have a tension dial on the back that you can spin up and down, but even with that, you do have to put a little bit of pressure behind it to make sure that your nail gets sinked right down to the wood. Honestly, I think the tension knob is pretty much pointless. I've shot two rows of nails into this soft pine and I've dialed up the tension meter every time. This row was shot using just the weight of the gun itself from the lightest to the heaviest tension. This row was shot with the same tension setting but I put a little bit of pressure behind it as I shot in each one. As you can see, there's very little difference in the end with the tensioner. It seems that the bulk of the pressure required to sink nails right down to the surface comes from you. To be fair, this is little different from any quality nail gun that I've used in the past. The gun will drive the nail most of the way, but to really make sure that you sink it flush with the wood, you have to put a little bit of pressure behind it. So how does it perform with plywood in the manner that I'm going to use it? Yeah, good. I'll also use it for melamine particle board. Yep. And what about with MDF skirting boards? Because that's probably something I'll use it for inside the house. Hmm. I might need to tap that in with a hammer, but it should be okay. Done. This wood's a mix of spotted gum, Merbo, Messmate, probably some other stuff in there. Honestly, when am I ever gonna use a nail gun like this? Never. Uh, at worst, I might use this to nail some hardwood trim around a window. It looks like it'll do the job for that. It actually worked a lot better than I expected, but I did get a couple where it didn't wanna go through. So is it worth buying? Well, the answer for me is yes. So long as you're already in the Azito Power Exchange battery world, and you understand that this is not a high-end tool that can take a beating day in, day out. It's designed for very light, casual work around the house or workshop, that's it. In practice, I'll probably use this once a month and I'll likely bang in less than 20 nails each time. That's all I need it for. 
I'm not going to work it hard and I've already got a number of Vezito batteries. So for me, the cost is low enough that I can justify buying this tool. If I didn't already have a number of Vezito batteries, would I buy this nail gun? No. It makes sense if you're already in the Azito battery world, but it isn't so amazing that you'd go out of your way to buy it if not.